Okay, in the last time, I, I show you that uh, one uh, expo, annual expo, uh, in uh, especially the, for the, the monitoring. Uh, but uh, for, unfortunately, the expo already uh, suspended uh, because of the, the disease. Okay, but I think I can arrange some of the field of visiting. Uh, for you, uh, from maybe from the, the Sumer Reservoir uh, to the uh, Taizong Sigang, uh, Sigang Reservoir. Okay. So uh, I will show you here. Oops. Can you see here? Uh, this is the uh, 3D model uh, in the northern Taiwan. Okay. So uh, here, this is the, I say, uh, the main. A rock slope. I try to mountain. Uh, so this is the. I think also use it. Uh, use the the UAV. Uh, take the picture, and uh, this take picture can be uh integrated uh, with the photogrammetry uh, to generate a three D model. Okay. So this is the three D model actually. Okay, but I would like to say this is the point cloud, but uh, with the I mean the cover uh, from the, the original image, so you can get this kind of the different kind of the color. Okay. Uh, so this is a three D model. Okay. Uh, We just mentioned that uh, we can use this kind of the series piezometer based on the RS485 uh, transmission protocol uh, to integrate several sensors uh, into a one single one transmission line. Okay, I think this is uh, will be convenient uh, for the field monitor if you only have uh, uh, one one borehole. Okay. And the next, I would like to show you some of the, the inclined uh, measurement. So this is the very typical one, what we call the tilt meter. This is the uh, manual one. How can I say? This is the sing, uh, single axis measurement. Uh, so for this one, you can use this to measure the, the tilt degree in this direction. Okay, so you can use this to find uh, the degree, uh, tilt degree. And sometimes we can combine this kind of the, the plate. Uh, this plate can help you to fix the tilt meter in not only the horizontal, but also, I mean the X and the Y direction. You can use uh, this uh, for the vertical and uh, horizontal uh, direction. So here you can find this is a typical measurement idea. Mm, I think this you can find mm, maybe uh, if you try to uh, find some uh, place, you can find a. Uh, equipment of this already installed on the wall okay and from this area i mean from this this is there is a plate uh fixed there so uh for the engineer uh, because this is the manual i mean uh maybe one month measurement okay one measurement so uh for the the first day of the the months they were going to the building and uh, using the manual tilt meter uh, to measure the, the degree. Not only this direction, but, but also in, uh, how can I say? <laughs> this is uh, the different direction of the inclined degree you can, you, you can use the, for the, uh, check the, the stability, okay? 
Okay, because you can use this for the measure measurement and also this measurement. Okay, you can put this horizontal or the vertical. Okay. But I would like to say uh, the TO meter also can be used uh, for the automation. Uh, this is uh, the, the automation. If you have uh, the DAQ, I will discuss in the future. If you have a data acquisition system and uh, with a program, uh, you can uh, use this kind of the sensor for the automation uh, measurement. Okay, so here you can find this is also the two direction, uh, X and Y. I mean here, X and Y. Okay, and also this one, X and Y. Uh, you can find the, the degree, tilted degree in a different direction. And also they will give you some of the uh, range of the measurement. <coughs> For this sensor, uh, maybe 15 degree, not so much but with a very high resolution, 0 0.0065. So uh, I cannot image how much small it is, okay? And, but I would like to say, all this kind of the sensor or the transducer, you need to check out the operating temperature, okay? For Taiwan, I think there's no snow in the, in the winter, so uh, I think this range of the operating temperature is also is okay in the Taiwan. But I don't know in France, maybe they some place have uh, snow as a snow in the winter, so the degree may be the minus. So you need to understand what kind of the sensor you need to choose, especially for the, the some kind of this uh, winter uh, temperature, okay? And also we can use the MANS. Actually, this is the, I mean, uh, the sum of the circuit inside of your, your cell phone. We can use this sensor and uh, for the very small uh, size of the transducer of the measurement in the field. For this case, this is from the Tokyo University. Uh, they develop a very cheap and a very uh, easy way to measure the, the slope. Uh, I mean, the stability. If you have a uh, sliding or the, uh, uh, what we call the density current, uh, this rod will have uh, uh, inclined degree, so we can measure the, the uh, degree of the inclinement. Okay, so this is the tilt meter in the field. And also we have uh, the ground service type, uh, like this one. Okay. So we can put some of this tilt meter on the wall, I mean uh, on the retaining wall or on the surface. Okay. So right now, we are going to discuss a very important component in the geotech measurement. Uh, this is what we call the inclinometer. Here, uh, I bring some of uh, the, this is the casing of the inclinometer. So you can find some trench inside one direction and the other direction. And uh, this one, is the inclinometer. Uh, I don't bring the cable because you need to, to connect the cable and put the inclinometer into this casing because there's a trench. So we can install this to measure Not so easy. Uh, to measure the, the tilt meter of this pipe. Okay, you can check by yourself. Oh, uh, mm. A little bit heavy. So you can find here it, there's a trench. This is the direction. 
and uh, for this direction, uh, vertical and uh, horizontal. So later you will show you will uh, check by yourself. Huh? Okay, and uh, this pipe, I mean uh, this ABS pipe, uh, is uh, for the measurement of the underground movement. Okay. So here, this is the concept of the inclinometer. Originally, uh, they will measure the, the degree theta uh, between the pipe and uh, the direction of the graph uh, uh, gravity direction. Okay. So this is the the inclinometer, and uh, I don't bring the the cable because the cable is too heavy. Okay, and also this is the the reader uh, to read the degree. I mean, you can read the degree here uh, manually. So, how can we use the for this kind of the measurement? Because we can drill a borehole and put the blue one, the ABS pipe, into the ground, uh, section by section. So, uh, if I have a lens light here. So the pipe will change to this one, right? So I can measure the, the degree because uh, the length of this uh, incline uh, meter is uh, 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 50 centimeter. So for this idea, for each 50 centimeter, I can measure a degree. I mean the theta uh, between the direction of the gravity, okay? So when I put the sensor down to the hole, down hole, uh, step by step, because I can put here, put here, put here for the next 50 centimeters, 50 centimeter, 50 centimeter. Right now, the L is uh, 50 centimeter. So how can we do? We can measure each theta. I mean, each theta. Right now, we have a theta 1, theta 2, theta 3. OK. So if I can have a theta, so I can change to the, the horizontal displacement. Oops. Right? So this is our horizontal displacement based on the tilt meter measurement you can find inside of the, the pipe there's a trench or uh, there's a trench so let's guide the this uh inclinometer to going down the borehole and uh, if it can be easily to uh, bring back okay so for this what can we do we can calculate Each section, I mean the horizontal displacement, right? So I can calculate the accumulation displacement of this uh, ABS pipe. So this is a typical measurement from the inclinometer. Okay, for each point, maybe there's a. Uh, mm, 50 centimeters, uh, this is in the feet. But actually, uh, most of this is the spacing is uh, 50 centimeter. Okay, so you can find here, wow, it is very interesting that if I have uh, initial measurement like this, this is the, uh, okay. And the second one is this one, this is, uh, 
21 June or July. Okay, I can compare how much displacement underground. I mean, this is the underground the displacement. Okay, and this is also the same, but this is a different. Uh, I mean, but however, however, there's a sum of the note. Kokoro. Mm, <laughs> uh, Fu Penta or uh, Uber Eat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but I, I need you to understand why we need a uh, two direction of the measurement. Can you guess why? Why we need a two direction? Okay, you already see this. We can measure this direction, and also I can measure the other direction, right? Uh, actually, uh, we use this for the measurement. One, uh, this is the a minus a plus b so each time you can use this inclinometer to measure the, the one direction incline degree right but why do we need the, i mean the x and the y direction no okay because underground movement is not parallel to the A direction or the B direction, maybe in this direction. So we need to make sure that both <coughs> direction to find a factor, uh, the summation factor, uh, to understand which direction of the movement. So this is the first, uh, first issue we need to know for the inclinometer, okay? And for the second one, I would like to say, if you have a chance, we can have a measurement in the field from the NCU slope, okay? Uh, we're trying to uh, install maybe 20 to 30 meters steps for home. And uh, also I will install this kind of the measurement. In a practical, in a practice, actually we need to measure the incline degree four times with a different direction for, for the case. This is the A direction. I would like to measure once. And uh, next, I would like to inverse the inclinometer to measure again. First, this direction. Next, this direction. Why? Because we can check out the system error. Because if there is no error from this system, the reading from these two measurements, I mean the difference, should be zero. Right? Because this is the, in the direction, this is the direction. So we can check out the system error uh, if the summation, I mean the difference, is not zero. Right? And also, I will measure this direction again for the horizontal and also the inverse one uh, to check the system again. And uh, this kind of the measurement can help us what? I would like to say, I would like to say, this kind of the tube When I installed into the, the ground uh, inside of the borehole, and uh, I will have a grout because you can find this is the borehole. Actually, maybe 10, uh, 7 to uh, 10 centimeters 
in the diameter. But however, this is uh, much smaller, right? So there will be a gap between the borehole and uh, this tube. So sometimes we will use the grouting to like the backfill or the sand uh, to fill up the spacing uh, between the this tube and the borehole. But somehow after the movement, underground movement, guess what? Originally, this is the, the, the vertical pipe. But somehow, after the movement, they will have a distortion. I mean, originally, this is the, the, the one side. I mean, the X keep this direction and the Y keep this direction. But somehow, after the deformation, they will have a distortion, like this one. Right? So, original, this is the X direction, but after maybe the 10 meter depth, they will change to this one because we have a, a rotation of this pool on this tube. Right? So, we need, so that's why we need the four times of the measurement. We try to understand if we have a rotation like this one. This is the corrected uh, measurement from the spiral or the rotation problem. Okay, so actually uh, this is the corrected one. Or corrected one, right? Okay, so then uh, we can check out the displacement uh, in a different time. Uh, and uh, we can find maybe this is the interface of the sliding. Just I say, we have an uh, interface here. So we may have the movement in the upper layer. So we can determine the interface of the sliding at all. Okay. So actually, we can determine maybe the 40 feet, uh, 40 feet underground will be the interface location of the sliding. So this is much important because just I said, we need to understand what is the location of the sliding surface. So this is the incline meter. And after that, we can use this kind of the soil nail or rock anchor. To increase the strength of this slope. If we cannot determine that the depth of the slope or some kind, if I have a limited rock nail or rock anchor means that this the rock nail or rock anchor is not useful if you this does not penetrate through the, the interface of the sliding. Okay. So I would like to say this is the typical one of the uh, inclinometer. Okay, but I also have uh, some very typical issue for you uh, for the next homework, okay. I have a hint, one hint that, can you tell me if, if the borehole depths only to here, what happened? if I install the, the inclinometer. Because in the, in the previous one, I said that we need to calculate 
the total displacement, right? If the base will move, and so the angle will be wrong, the base needs to be still. Yeah. Yes. We need a fixed point at the end because if this is the fix, then we can calculate the absolute, uh, the, the whole horizontal displacement at all. But however, if this is not a fix, I mean, you assume that this is the fix, but however, this is still in the upper bar of the length line. So, there's uh, no, uh, I mean, uh, reference uh, to calculate the next line. So, for the inclinometer, it is very important to penetrate the length line uh, depth in the beginning. But some of you may say, uh, Professor, how can we know that? if we have enough borehole depths in the field. Of course, this is another issue because uh, you need to maybe have a, some of a field in investigation at the first, and maybe you need uh, some of the pilot uh, test uh, or the pilot measurement to understand uh, maybe uh, where is the Length slide surface, you can predict that, and then you can decide uh, how much depth uh, you need to uh, install uh, with the whole hole. Okay, but this is another issue. But I would like to say this is a very important uh, five star. Okay, I know that we only have a three star in a Michelin food, right? Have you ever been uh, the star? Um, uh, I, I don't know how to say in the French, a very, very expensive restaurant in the Michelin uh, with a one, two, three star, right? Uh, <laughs> no? Yeah, I know that. I've never been there before. Okay, in the Taiwan, we may have. Uh, 20 or 30 restaurants uh, get the certification. One star, only one star or two star. Okay. okay. But I would like to say five star means that it is very, very important. Uh, I mean, uh, this is the uh, assumption of the uh, uh, inclinometer measurement. Okay. So everyone needs to know. Uh, this is the very important assumption uh, at all. So I would like to say, we have a three case of the inclinometer. The first one here you can find with the different date. This is a different date. Uh, this is the 11.26 and uh, this one will be the uh, and then this one will be the uh, okay you have a different date of the measurement but you can find this is a change in not a, a trend i mean a randomly uh, change at all Okay, and uh, there's a problem that the depths here, uh, I'm so sorry, this is, the, I mean the elevation. So the elevation here, this is a 42 to only the maybe the 18. Okay, this is the absolute uh, elevation. And what is the problem? of this measurement for the first case. Okay, I already have a, one hint, the five star hint for you, okay, for the first case. But I would like to ask you to discuss with your teammate and think about what happened that we will have this kind of the random trend 
of the displacement of um, this kind of the inclined arm measurement. I already said that. I give you another hint. This is our borehole, and uh, this is our uh, inclinometer with the chain. Uh, that's so easy to plot. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. So this is uh, our uh, pipe. But inside of the, the borehole, I mean the spacing between the borehole and the ABS pipe, sometimes we will use the grout or the sand uh, to fill up. But you can find some reference. I already have uh, already give some uh, reference in the EE class platform. You can check out what happened that we may have this kind of the measurement error uh, in a different time okay and also for the test two this is the incrementer that from the deep excavation i mean for the basement construction so i may have the inclinometer here I may have an inclinometer here or uh, just inside of the retaining wall. This is the retaining wall. So this is the result from the measurement of the deep excavation. But you can find here, here, there's uh, some very strange, I mean, uh, big part of this measurement. Uh, so can you explain why? Why can we get this measurement uh, from the case of this deep excavation? Okay. And the third case, I already enlarged the, the original, the, the diffraction is very small, but I try to enlarge. For each tick, the, the unit, it is a center, uh, 10 centimeter. But you can find this is the measurement result of the inclinometer. So what happened? Actually, it should be like this one. Very smooth one, right? Very smooth one, very smooth one. But however, if you get this kind of the result, can you explain why? Why can we have this kind of the very bad, very ugly result or measurement from the inclinometer? Okay, so this will be the hint due to the grout and the sand. Oh, so I would like to uh, ask our four groups members, uh, all of you, to find out what is the explanation for these three case, cases. First one here, second one here, and the third one here. Okay. Any problem for this homework? Yes. Can you show the previous, the current, the current result? Yes, this one. Uh, this correct result is because, just I said, you may have the rotation of this pipe uh, when you have a movement on the ground. Okay. This is not the same direction, keep the same direction at all. They will change the direction, have a rotation or the spiral, they say the spiral. Okay. Uh, because this data is real data. I found uh, this data from the real case. Uh, this is the real case, not the synthetic one. So 
of course, in the future, if you have a chance to apply this kind of the measurement for the deformation, the reason or the cause. Uh, okay. But I would like to say, in my experience, I already have uh, one chance to measure the, the 100 meter depth of the inclinometer manually. It took one day, almost one day of the measurement, only 100 meters, but four times of the repeat uh, measurement. So it is very exhausted. Uh, it is very tired if you try to measure every 50 centimeters check every 50 centimeters check also there is uh, some of the very uh convenient tool i mean that uh, you can connect to the your cell phone so they will keep continuously uh take the data of the incline degree but however you still need uh, some um i mean uh, one one day to for the operation and the list, this is the IPI, in place in kinometer. This is the automation one. I mean, you put several of the in kinometer here. One here, one here, one here, with the extension rod. Okay, so you can use this IPI for the automation. No more manpower. But I would like to say, guess how much of this? Eight thousand US dollar <laughs> or Taiwan, Taiwan dollar, NTD dollar. Eight thousand. Higher, higher. Give me a number. Guess. 50,000. 50,000. 50,000. 50,000. Taiwan. 50. You say 50. 50. 50. I 50, 5, 0, and then. Oh, uh, you say 15. Uh, NT dollars or USD dollars. NT dollars. 50,000. 15, 50,000. Yeah. <laughs> higher, higher. Oh, oh, 60. 60, higher. higher. 80. 80, higher. <laughs> How much it is? 100,000 NT dollars, higher. <laughs> <laughs> 200 almost higher 300 300,000 dollars for this problem but of course also the cable right and the reader okay. but i would like to say they, this may be 20 uh 200 or the 250,000 uh, anti dollars at all okay so you can see this is a very expensive one right so that's why we almost use the manual for the measurement for maybe for the one company you can only buy one or two most uh, equipment for this measurement right okay but if you try to use this for the automation in the, this kind of the ipi so for this, I have a three, one, two, three, in kinometer. So how much it will be for the IPI? One million. Yeah, maybe one million, you, twenty dollars. So I would like to say, 
the IPI also can be used for the automated monitoring in the field, but the cost is too high. So that's why we cannot use this IPI for a very dense measurement. I mean, for this kind of the measurement, we can use this for the every 50 centimeters, right? So the resolution is very, very high. We can check out of every 50 centimeters uh, incline degree. But however, for this case, we cannot put, maybe we need to monitor uh, 100 meters borehole. So I only have a 2 million NT dollars budget. So at the least, I only can put the six inclinometer in the field for the IPI measurement and all. So how can I cover 100 meters depth? Only use the three inclinometers. It is impossible, right? Uh, so uh, if you're trying to use the IPI, I would like to say you need to use the manual inclinometer at the first and to identify the possible uh, dense light depths, maybe narrow to the 10 meters or five meters. You know that the range of the surface of the uh, the lens light. Then I can put an IPI inside because what you can find is if I use the traditional, I can measure every fifty centimeters, right? Every fifty centimeters, every fifty centimeters. So if I have a very narrow, I mean the narrow sliding surface, I can find the displacement because I can check out the theta and calculate the theta on the equation, right? To calculate the horizontal. But however, if I say, if I use the IPI, I only have a six inclinometer maybe in a 10 meters range. So each inclinometer maybe need to cover 10 meter to six. I need to cover. So how can I extend? Sometimes we use in an extension rod. Uh, it's just like steel rod to connect the inclinometer piece by piece. But this uh, would be a big problem because we have enlarged the spacing of this inclinometer. If I have a very sharp and very narrow shear band of the lens light, and uh, this is just between the extension rod, what is the result of the measurement, everyone? Because there is no sensor. So for this sensor, the theta is zero. For this sensor, theta is zero. So I only get no displacement at all. So this is the limitation. If you try to use the IPI for the measurement, you need to check out your spacing because this is the maybe 50 centimeters. But if you try to have a limit project, you need to extend, use the extension rod. Maybe this is the one meters of the extension rod and the next 50 centimeters and the extension one meters and the next 50 centimeters measurement. So I would like to say there will be a problem if you try to increase the IPI resolution, spatial resolution. So this will be a good uh, example for you, okay? And I would like to say for the current technology, right now we have a new shape acceleration array. Originally, this kind of the uh, SAA is used for the, the animation. Someone see the animation movie uh, because they combine the several inclinometer in our main body. 
so they can trace our movement okay for the animation will be the very um, good movie so you can find here okay this is original used for the 3d movie technology but right now we can use this saa uh, shape acceleration array this is originally uh, based on the accelerometer uh, accelerometer so we can put this into the ground piece by piece so it is just like the, the inclinometer piece by piece by piece by piece keep the high spatial resolution but however much expensive than the ipi okay uh, so um, there will be a uh, um, another problem if you have for only a uh, limited project at all and then this is the same the dms the same idea with the series maybe also this is a 50 centimeters okay and a small connection okay and another 50 centimeters of the measurement of for the inclinometer inclinometer okay this is the dms differential multi parametric system so i already uh, introduced the tdr before so i will get a very quick understanding of it here so i will have uh, the different refraction if i have uh, the deformation and uh, this is the em field em wave uh, from the tdr okay so this can also be used for the automation and okay. i already put a computer here and i control the tdr to send the em pulse every day or every hour so i can monitor the data so this also can be used to determine the depths on the depths of the TD uh, of the lens slide. So I already show you some of the method to determine the depths of the lens slide from the inclinometer, okay, and also the IPI uh, for the automation and SAA EMS, and of course, uh, in addition of the TDR. Uh, these are the uh, most useful and common sensor uh, so far uh, for detect the the depths of the lens light. Next, I would like to show you a low cell. Why we try to monitor the low cell from the soil anchor or rock anchor? Because uh, I don't know if you already have uh, learned the the, the pretension. Because I can have a pretension of this. This is the original. This is a steel steel bar. So I can put the pretension and put inside of this the slope. And uh, if you have a pretension next, you may have uh, the compression pressure of this uh, uh, area of the slope. So we need a re I mean a refract uh, a wall for the back support the pretension. Okay, this is uh, used for the, the fix the, the position of the steel bar. So maintain the pretension pressure, uh, I mean the pressure. But however, if this kind of the fixed end is not stable uh, with the time, I mean the pretension 
losing with the time. Maybe there's a, a big problem uh, if you already decide from based on this pretension, because this will decrease decrease with the time. Uh, if one this fixed end fell, the other one is that this steel bar have a corrosion at all. Okay, so we sometimes use the low cell means that we can check the pretension reading every time automation okay so this is the the low cell i used for the uh, check the pretension reading of the steel uh, steel bar okay so uh, we can use this uh, for the, the measurement of the soil anchor and the next one I would like to show you this is the extension uh, extensometer. Very simple idea. Fixed end and a fixed end. And uh, if you have a crack, we inside we have an encoder. Uh, and uh, this is the wire, the steel wire. Uh, keep the the tension, and uh, we may measure the the open crack uh, so we can measure the width of this uh, so this is the extension uh, extensometer in the field so here this is the encoder uh, what we call the encoder uh, to monitoring the extension of the cable and the cable is confined inside of this pipe okay so this is the fixed end and the other one here this is another fixed end or fixed end very simple but very useful okay very useful for uh, the field of monitoring so if you try to monitor the crack uh, in this area uh, using this extensometer fix fix and also I would like to show you next is a settlement measurement, uh, settlement gauge. Uh, of course, sometimes we're using a total station uh, for the measurement at all. Okay, you can find this is the time history. Uh, originally it should be the flat, but with the time, maybe uh, like this one, uh, have a settlement or uh, have a settlement at all okay of course you can use in the lidar for the service settlement measurement uh, in the different time so this is the what we call the razor uh, laser also you can use the gps we already show that and then this is uh, only for the service sorry this is only for the service settlement. I mean uh, the summation of the all the settlement uh, in the service, ground service. But however, if you, we try to understand the settlement in the different depths, we may use this kind of the, the so sound that sound that settlement or the, the magnet extensometer or the, the rod extensometer on the ground for this case they have a tube this tube is like this one have a very rough surface and also we have a ring here So if I have a settlement on the ground, means that I will track this pipe. So this will have the displacement. So if I have a phone or detector from this field, I can detect the position of this ring, position of this ring. And the next time, maybe the ring will have a settlement in the different depths with a different level for this maybe this area have a larger 
settlement or uh, because some maybe some soft layer in that area maybe clay was sealed okay for this area maybe this is the sand or the gravel okay i think this is the most the same idea and uh, this is uh, using the level measurement on the ground of the settlement okay and of course we can use this uh, for the, the earth pressure and also you can find from the structural on structural so i would like to say based on this the idea the slope measurement can be also implemented into the uh, tunnel instrument maybe i can enlarge here here you can find uh, I put a several uh, sensor in a different kind of the uh, area. The first one here, this is the DAQ. This is the data logger. I will introduce in the next chapter. And uh, this is the piezometer uh, for the water level measurement. And uh, for the third one, this is the extensometer uh, for the settlement measurement. Okay, and then you can find here, this is the 10 IPI. So we can check maybe the deformation during the internal construction. Okay, and also here you can find this is the building with the several tilt meter because during the construction underground construction they will have some uh maybe the unstable movement uh, to the, the the next building next by building okay and uh, for the tunnel itself maybe we can lodge here some kind of the rock displacement transducer may be used for monitoring the shape of this tunnel and also we can use the rock bolt and uh, with the low cell oh sorry low cell to monitor the pretension okay and uh, the other one is a very very unique it is what we call the micro creep meter how can we do that? Let me show you here. This is like the extensometer. Okay, so you can measure the degree piece by piece by piece. So you can find here piece by piece by piece by piece by piece by piece. So you can you can use this kind of the, the what we call the basal convergence system to find the shape of the tunnel. Okay, so I think this is a very unique, but it's still based on this kind of the measurement in kinometer at all. Okay. Okay, so I think we almost uh, show you the uh, the lens light and so the internal instrument instrumentation at all. And uh, please, uh, we have uh, two homework today. One is please compare the, and find the difference between the eyes two thirty two and the eyes four eighty five. I think this is much easier for you, but in a group group uh, homework and uh, the other one is try to check out and uh, explain what happened for these three cases of the inclinometer okay you can find some reference uh, maybe for the Google or some the uh, Google Scholar do you know the Google Scholar okay yes no yes 
Okay, you can type the Google Scholar. It is the, I think, only for the, the academic research. You can find some re relevant uh, paper. Okay, easily. So please do that. Maybe after two weeks. Okay. No more problem. All right. See you next time.